we are going to take a bit of a look, um, slightly more formally than perhaps you've done in the past, on how we prove things and just working with mathematical logic. Sometimes the statements that we're going to look at in this course uh, seem quite intimidating and quite impenetrable. But it turns out that a lot of the manipulations that we end up doing are actually quite mechanical if you understand the kind of rules that sit underneath. So in this uh, video we're going to have a quick look at some of, some of the basics of how we work with logic and how we prove things and we'll go from there. So we'll start with the basics. The basic thing that we're going to be working with is a mathematical statement. Now a statement is just a well-defined thing that is either going to be true or false. So sometimes we might want to prove that a certain statement is true or we might want to disprove a certain statement to show that it's false. So examples might be something like the statement 2 is even. Okay, that is a mathematical statement. It, it can either be true or it's false. We know it's true. Uh, there might be a more complicated one. It would be something like there are infinitely many primes or infinitely many pairs of primes. that differ by 2. Okay, and this is a complicated statement and it's one that has not yet even been proven. People, we, do not, we do not know, although we strongly suspect that it's true, but this is the twin prime conjecture for example. So statements can be complicated or simple, but the thing that defines them is that we should be able to uh, say whether they are true or false or be something that we can prove. So now that we've just defined what a statement is, let's have a look at some of the operations that we can do on them. The first of these is negation. So if we start with a statement P, then the negation of P, which we denote with the symbol here, this is the negation of P, is just the opposite statement. Okay, And we can represent how this works in a thing called a truth table. So if we've got p here, possible values that p can take are true or false. The corresponding statement not p, or the negation of p, has got the opposite truth values, false and true. Okay, so that's negation. That one's quite straightforward. Um, the negation of 2 is even would be 2 is odd, for example, the opposite statement. The next one that we're going to try out is and. So this one involves two statements, and it's the statement p and q, written, often written as um, p and q, with an upside down wedge like this. Okay, this, is, this statement is only true when p and q are both true. So again, it's kind of, we can write down a truth table. This time we're going to have two statements on the left, and we're going to figure out what p and q is on the right. So we'll enumerate the different possibilities for p and q. So we've got false, 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 true, true, false, and true, true. Now P and Q is only true when both P and Q are true. So the only possibility for true is down here. The other three are going to be false. That is and. And following and, we have or. So we're going to now look at the statement P or Q. Now this one's a little bit different from common English usage. Because P or Q means P is true, Q or Q is true, or both. So when we use or in a mathematical context like this, um, we are allowing P to be true, Q to be true, or both to be true. All of these are, are P or Q is true. And the notation is P or Q. It's just the same wedge, but this time it's going to look more like a V. All right, so let's just draw the OR truth table. So again, just like before, we'll have P, Q here. And on this side, we'll put P OR Q. Um, we're going to have false, 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 true, true, false, true, true. Now this time, all we require for P OR Q to be true is for one or the other or both of them to be true. So there are actually three possibilities for P or Q being true. This is the only one where it's false. Turns out that AND and OR both behave very nicely. Um, we have associativity, which means that P and Q 
Q and R is a thing that makes sense because this statement here is logically equivalent, i.e. have the same set of truth values as this statement here, P and Q and R. So if you've got three ands in a row, doesn't matter in which order you evalu evaluate them, it's going to work nicely. Same thing holds for OR, P, OR, Q, OR, R is logically equivalent. That's what that if and only if backwards left right arrow thing is. Gives us P, OR, Q, OR, R. Okay, so we have associativity just like we do with multiplication and addition of numbers. These operations uh, follow those same procedures as well, so that's quite nice. Uh, so parentheses are not necessary when we just have ands or just have ors, but if they're mixed up, then we do have to be a bit careful. So when we're dealing with numbers and we multiply and we add, if we've got brackets involved, we can multiply out brackets. So we have the same thing for our and and our or. If I take p and q or r, I get... P and Q, or P and R. So it's just like I've multiplied out the out the brackets. So if you think of and as multiplication and or as addition here, it's like I've just multiplied out my brackets as we would the normal way. Okay, and it works the other way around as well. If I take P, or Q and R, I can multiply out my brackets as P or Q. and P or R. Okay, so that one all works nicely. We can expand brackets just the way that we'd hope we'd be able to. Uh, the next thing we want to look at is what happens if we negate um, one of these things. So these are called De Morgan's Laws. Now we're taking an absolute whistle-stop whistle tour through logic here. We're going extremely fast. But we just want to see how negation works over these things. So how does negation over and and or. So first one, if we take the negation of P and Q, that's the same as, okay, remember left right arrow just means logical equivalence or the same thing. That is exactly the same as not P or not Q. Can I notice that we expanded our bracket, but the AND turned into an OR. So this thing, let's try that again, uh, this thing here flipped. Okay, so when we're trying to expand brackets with an OR or the negation on the outside, we need to flip whatever's going on on the inside. Let's have a look at what happens for P or Q, same thing. We can expand the bracket, but the OR gets flipped into an AND. So just got to be a little bit careful when you're negating something that you flip over the AND or the OR appropriately. Now you can check all this with the truth table. I'll leave that as an exercise, um, but you can verify any of these relationships that I've put together um, just by building truth tables for both sides and showing that they give you the same thing. And that is all you need to do to show that they're the same. Now the next one is a bit of a funny one that um, you will have come across before, but it can be a little bit confusing. Because implication, in this context that we're going to use it, has a very specific meaning, um, and it's formally defined by the truth table. So we're going to write P implies Q, formally defined as the following truth table. So I've got P, Q here. So I build the same thing as usual. False, 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 true, true, false, uh, for, uh, true, true. Okay, now our, our human mind or our English language speaking mind wants implication to have some kind of causality. Like if P is Q, then it must follow that Q is true because of something about it. But actually, it's just a relationship defined by this table as follows. So this one is true. 
If both P and Q are false, then P implies Q is true. It's going to take a little bit to get your head around this. If P is false and Q is true, then the implication is also true. Um, if P is true and Q is false, then P implies Q is not true. And P is true and Q is true means that P implies Q is true. Now this P implies Q says nothing about whether or not P and Q have any relationship to each other. It's just something that's either true or false depending on the truth values of P and Q. So P implies Q, as far as we're concerned, means it is not possible for P to be true and Q to be false. Okay, cool. So that's what implication means. Um, if we want to show an implication, then we have to prove that if P is Q, uh, so you, usually when we're going to prove something, we prove this one here, because if P is false, then that doesn't usually give us anything to say anything about uh, Q with. So normally when we're proving, we are actually linking these, things, these two things together, and we're using the fact that P is true to show that Q must also be true. So this is the case that we'll normally be focusing in on, but formally speaking, these two cases also have a true truth value for P implies Q as well. Okay, now again, we can play around with our truth tables, and it's been an interesting exercise to verify this one. If we want to write this in terms of the logic values we already have, P implies Q is equivalent to not P and not Q. Okay, in fact, let's just, just sketch that one out in the corner just to get used to why the heck this actually makes sense. So if I've got P and Q, set up my truth table again. Sometimes zeros and ones are easier. If you're an engineer and done some logic and those kinds of things, uh, then you'll be used to, using, used to using zeros and ones for this kind of calculation. So if I've got P and Q, this expression needs a not Q, so let's put that in here. Not Q will be just be the opposite, T, F, T, F. What I'm trying to do is build up this expression bit by bit to show that my final truth table will be that one here. Okay, so that's not Q. So the next thing we're going to need is P and not Q. So I'm going to and this column with this column, which will give me false, because remember the only way that and can be true is if both things are true. False, false, true, false. Okay, so my and has given me this one here. And the last thing I want to do is to negate that whole thing. So I'm going to negate uh, the one that I just built. So now I'm going to be focusing on negating this column just here. And I will get true, true, false, true, which lo and behold is exactly the same as what I had over here for my definition. Okay, so we don't even need the symbol technically, but I'd much rather see the arrow than that mess with all the negations and the ands and things. Okay, so that's cool. Um, so those things are logically equivalent. Um, we could expand that out. Now we can just practice our laws from before. So if I'm negating over brackets, then I negate whatever's inside. Not P. The and becomes an or. The not Q becomes a Q. When I negate it, it goes back again. Now often, a case that we'll often need is to negate an implication. So the negation of P implies Q is therefore going to be now I'll negate this expression here. So the P, not P, gets negated back to P. The OR goes back to an AND and the Q goes back to a not Q. So we're back to this expression we had just before. Okay, so often if we want to prove, for example, an implication by contradiction, then the starting point is to negate the implication. 
So to negate this statement, and then to show that this statement here results in something contradictory. So now, obviously, we'll do lots of examples of these as we go through the course. We're just sort of going through this in a very sort of um, abstract way, just to lay this groundwork and show how, that it's actually relatively straightforward mechanically to process these statements. Sometimes the baggage that comes with um, putting meaning on P and Q, like when P and Q are in context and it actually looks really horrible and complicated, it can be harder to see how you manipulate this logic. So if we can think in these terms, it's actually a really good thing. All right, a couple more terms that we need to define. Converse, as well as making cool shoes, um, has a meaning in mathematics too. So the converse of an implication Okay, so often we talk about the converse of an implication is the statement Q implies P. So, so sometimes a standard question might be, here's the statement, show whether or not the converse is true. Okay, so if P implies Q, is it also true that Q implies P? So the converse of an, is something that you take of an implication, and it's just the other statement the other way around. Not to be confused with the negation or the contrapositive, which is next. Now the converse is not logically equivalent to the original statement. Sometimes a statement may be true, but the converse is not. Contrapositive is different. Contrapositive is something that's logically equivalent. So contrapositive of P implies Q is not Q implies not P. These are logically equivalent. Which is to say that we could write this using our fancy notation here. Uh, okay, so if, I, if I'm trying to prove a statement that is P implies Q, I could equally well prove the contrapositive, which is not Q implies not P and both will give me a valid proof. So I think that's enough for this video. In the next one, we'll look at a similar thing, which is the subject of quantifiers. But I think this one's getting a bit long. So next video, we'll talk about quantifiers, which are things like for all x or there exists x. And we'll put, out, we'll put together how we can work with these things, uh, with these lessons we've learnt about logical statements uh, in, this, in this video here. So we'll catch you next time. See you later.